All right. So thank you all for joining today's session. This is part two of our three-part disability um, employment awareness series this week. Um, so if you could go ahead and drop in the chat box your name and where you're from and why you joined this conversation today. Um, so my name is Morgan Bradley and I am the Community Outreach Program Manager and Coordinator with Texas A&M Ag Life Extension Service in partnership with the Texas Council for Developmental Disabilities. And I am joined today with my colleagues from across the state. Um, Rosa Gill, the South Texas Regional Coordinator, Dr. Shelby Bunn, the Central Texas Regional Coordinator, Skylar Mueller, the West Texas Regional Coordinator, Andy Crocker, Senior Extension Health Specialist, and Emily Wintermute, our Graduate Student Assistant. Um, so before we get started, I'll go through an overview of the discussion today. And um, a few ways to connect with us and a few announcements. And so um, as far as Zoom tips, we are all in Zoom world yet again. Um, and the way we have this one set up is we all are visible. Um, so make sure you change your um, viewing mode to speaker mode so that you'll only see the speakers. Um, along with that, please keep your mics muted and your videos off during the presentation. At the end, you um, can come off of your mic to ask questions if time is allotted. Um, and then I'll just go through some agency overviews and ways to connect with us. And then we will have a one hour presentation um, from our presenters here today from Texas Workforce, and then a short time for Q&A and a quick closing. All right. So the Texas Council for Developmental Disabilities or TCDD is a statewide governor appointed board that is the only entity and state government solely focused on the needs and interests of individuals with developmental disabilities and their family, families. TCDD is mandated to provide input on state policy initiatives and build communities through statewide grant projects and educate and inform the public and leaders on developmental disability issues. Texas A&M AgriLife Extension Service is the outreach and community education arm of the Texas A&M system. For its more than 100 year history, Texas A&M AgriLife Extension has worked to help Texans better their lives with practical applicable learning through a statewide network of professional educators, trained volunteers, a presence in all 254 counties and the campuses of Texas A&M University and Prairie View A&M University. In 2019, TCDD partnered with AgriLife Extension to create a regional connection of regional coordinators with a mission to help Texans with intellectual and developmental disabilities. So there are regional coordinators throughout the state that you can connect with um, and links to all of this information has been provided in the chat. So co-moderating this event with me today is Ms. Rosa Gill. Rosa has been working closely on the topic of disability employment awareness with our community partners of the Rio Grande Valley and throughout the state after participating in several disability related events, through, well, disability employment related events throughout the year and attending employment coalition meetings, Rosa launched the disability employment awareness series. And so this is a follow on to our sessions that we hosted this summer. And this is, the, like I said earlier, the second part of our sessions this week. And so um, now, before we um, go on to our presenters, Rosa will give you a brief little background and introduce them. Hi, and good morning, everybody. I'm uh, glad to see everybody here. Um, we're gonna go um, on to the part two of our three-part series. Uh, part two is called Ready to Hire. Uh, vocational rehabilitation. And we have uh, presenters today who are Vanessa Vera. She is the Vocational Rehabilitation Division Business Relations Coordinator at Texas Workforce Commission. And accompany, accompanying her is Megan Bennett, who is a Community Outreach and Awareness Specialist. 
Um, Ms. Bennett joins us from also from Texas Workforce Solutions Vocational Rehabilitation Services in Victoria, Texas. And she will be starting our session uh, this morning. Welcome, ladies. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Good morning, everybody, and uh, welcome. Um, I'm excited today to talk with you about the vocational rehab program uh, that partners with Texas Workforce Solutions. Um, I'm waiting for the... Yes, just one moment. Okay. Amy, if you can, turn it down a notch. Um, just to let you know while they're getting the presentation up is that we do have um, across the state, um, I, my position, the Community Outreach and Awareness Specialist, um, we are divided into regions as well. And I cover the South Texas region, which goes from like San Antonio, uh, Victoria, all the way over to Laredo and down to south to the border. Um, and we do, I know that I saw some people from the East Texas area, we do have um, a community outreach and awareness specialist in, in the East Texas area uh, out of Tyler. And then we have um, one in the Houston area. And also, uh, I think I saw her name on here, Giovanni is from the Austin area. Um, so there she is. And um, we do also then have um, a outreach specialist in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, and then uh, another specialist in the Panhandle West Texas area. Um, she has a huge coverage space, so we're divided into regions as well. I am so sorry. It was up okay. and then and also just to kind of let you know, um, in regards to the Texas Workforce Solutions Vocational Rehabilitation Division, we also have, um, like Megan mentioned, our six regions. And for the business relations, we have two business relations coordinator for each region that also cover, um, we connect with employers, community agencies to really get a diversity and inclusion into the, the workplaces. So, um, Currently in our region that covers, you know, Ubalde, Middle Rio, San Antonio, all the way down to uh, Corpus Christi and the lower Rio Grande Valley, it will be myself and an individual by the name of Ricardo Rendon. Morgan, do you wanna see if I can share the presentation? I can share it. Um, for some reason, the closed captioning isn't okay. sharing. Um, I'm going to let y'all go ahead and get started, though, and then we'll figure it out and we may need to switch screens. Okay. Right. Okay. <clears throat> so, um, uh, we are with Vocational Rehabilitation Services, partnered with Texas Workforce Solutions. Next screen. I wanted to start out this morning by giving you a little history of vocational rehab services. Um, we've had a couple of names, so I wanna kind of review those with you. Vocational Rehabilitation Services um, is a federal program that actually uh, was established uh, over 100 years ago. Last year, we celebrated our 100th anniversary on the, the federal. In Texas, um, established Texas Rehabilitation Commission in 1973, and uh, we were the state's run vocational rehab program for many, many years uh, under the name of T Texas Rehabilitation Commission, TRC. So if some of you have heard that name, that's still the same program. And then in 2004, we were moved uh, from a commission under the umbrella of the Health and Human Services uh, program and we were known as our name changed to Department of Assistive and Rehabilitative Services, DARS. So if any of you have heard that term before, still the same program. And then in 2016, uh, the state legislature partnered us with Texas Workforce Solutions um, and our name changed once again to Texas Workforce Solutions Vocational Rehabilitation Services. So 
All of those names that we've gone by, we're all still the same program with the same policies and the same goals uh, to help people with disabilities achieve and maintain employment. Um, so just wanted to give you a little history. Next slide. What is vocational rehabilitation? Uh, we are a program that helps people with disabilities prepare for employment, enter into employment, engage and maintain employment, or advance in employment. Uh, so we have all of those goals. Um, we do work with, we, we specialize kind of in working in, with two different groups of individuals. We start working with our youth at the age of 14 and uh, to about 22. And that we have specialized counselors that go into the schools and work with them in the schools and um, assist them in preparing for employment and, and trying to uh, find their goals for employment. Then we uh, also work with adults uh, in finding employment. These still, it's still the same program, whether you're a youth or an adult, it's just a little different focus. Um, there is no outside edge as far as the age that we have to stop working with you. The whole uh, guidance is as long as you're wanting to work, we can help you. I once had an individual who was 85 years old and she wanted to keep working. So we worked with her and helped her with that. Our program also has another goal of working with businesses and employers to help um, recruit and retain employees with disabilities or give accommodations to those employees. Um, Vanessa may talk about that a little bit more. I'm gonna focus on the actual services to the individuals. Next slide. So eligibility requirements for our program um, the first one is the individual must have a disability. So when we talk about disabilities, we our definition of disability is very broad. So I know that most people, when they think and hear of the word disability, they have an automatic picture that comes into their mind. Someone in a wheelchair, someone that's paralyzed, or uh, someone that uh, has uh, intellectual deficiencies. Those people are eligible, but we also include a lot, a, a many, many more. Um, so really it's someone with, with an impairment, a physical impairment, mental impairment, emotional, uh, or a sensory. So someone with a, a back injury that they can no longer lift over 20 pounds and they have worked in the oil field all of their life. That is, an, that is a disability to their, their employment that they've had. Um, someone with a visual impairment doesn't have to be completely what we consider uh, where you can't see anything. It can be all of the different ranges of a vision uh, impairment. Someone with a learning disability. I think we don't normally think of people with learning disabilities as having that traditional disability, but they could be eligible for our services with hearing loss, um, anxiety, those are uh, potential uh, impairments that and diagnoses that we could work for, work with. Someone with social security disability or SSI, if you're getting that um, benefit, then you are presumed eligible for our program because you've already been determined as having a disability by the social security uh, department. So we, we can always work with someone with SSI or SSDI. The next step in our eligibility decision is, is that disability or is that impairment uh, resulting in a substantial impediment to employment? And if that answer is yes, then we can work with you. Um, is that impairment getting in the way of working is, is basically the understanding of, of what we look at. The other, the third question is the individual require our specialized services. They need our help. They can't do this on their own. Uh, and if the answer to that is yes, then that's, that's another check mark. And then the individual must want to go to work because we are all about work. As you've noticed, I did not mention income. 
Um, income is not part of our eligibility requirements. We do, however, look at your income before we go to pay for something for you, but it's not part of eligibility. So uh, someone can have a good income but and still be eligible for some of our services. We, we do work on a sliding scale, so we will know whether you may have to help pay for things or not, but it does not have to do with eligibility. Next slide. So this is just kind of a list of some of the disabilities that we work with. It's not an exclusive list um, or an endless list. These are just some examples. Um, I'm not going to read all of them to you, but you know we work with people with ADHD and, and autism, uh, hearing loss, someone with seizures. If their seizures are you know uncontrolled and they need assistance or finding out how to manage their seizure seizure while they're at work. Um, um, uh, spinal cord injuries, depending on the level of injury, and, and we can help with all of those things. So these are just some very basics, a basic list. Um, like I said, it's not uh, exclusive of other potential disabilities. Next slide. We do have a process that we go through <clears throat> as far as our services. So um, <clears throat> we do have to go kind of step by step where we take the initial contact, then we take an application, we ask all kinds of questions, gather information. Um, once you're determined eligible for our program, then we start what we call the planning phase where we're gathering information about your disability, we're gathering information about your uh, interest and skills and abilities and, and to form a vocational goal. What is it that you want to do for work? And then we, once we know that, then we go into active services and we decide what it is that we, uh, the goal that we're looking towards, the kind of employment that we're look, looking towards and what kind of services are you needing to get there? Um, once the individual gets the services and then gets the job, then we move into what we call our employment phase. And that's where we follow the person along to make sure everybody's doing okay, that the employer is happy, that the customer is happy, that the disability is stable and not causing any problems with the job. And once those things have been determined and the individual has worked for at least 90 days, then we look towards our successful closure. Our whole goal is to um, close a case successfully employed. And uh, so that's kind of the process that we move through as we, we work with the customer. Next slide. So I get the question all the time, what kind of services can we provide? And it's a very difficult question to answer because they our services are individualized. Uh, it's actually easier for me to tell you what we cannot do than to tell you what we can do um, because the, the options uh, are just kind of almost unlimited because it depends on the person. Um, and we do, everything we do is uh, planned for that particular person. So you may have a friend that came in and got some a specific service, but then another individual may not be able to, you know, may not be appropriate for another individual to get the same exact thing. So it's just, it's very individualized. But next slide, I think, has some uh, kind of examples of some of the services that we typically provide to people. This is not an exhaustive list either. Counseling and guidance is our primary service that we provide to individuals. Um, and that includes working, you know, with the counselor uh, who is trained in vocational rehab and they understand disabilities. They help the individual understand their disability, learn about it if they need to, um, talk with them and plan with them. We also help with job placement. We can do job coaching where uh, someone goes with the individual on the job and helps them learn the job and become proficient at it. We can help pay for academic training or vocational training. Um, we also help with auxiliary services, anything that's supportive of the individual on the job. We also have some special 
uh, subject matter experts that can help with um, social security benefit analysis. So a lot of times people that are getting SSI or SSDI are afraid to lose those benefits. And so they don't try to work because they don't want to lose the benefits. Well, we can have someone sit down with them and review their benefits and then talk with them about um, uh, the benefits of working and how to manage the SSI and employment. Uh, so that's a, that's a great service that we provide. We can also provide some durable medical equipment if someone needs like a new wheelchair or those kind of things. We can help purchase hearing aids for people. Um, I think that's a great benefit that we have because if you can't hear uh, on the job and you're making mistakes, then that really does affect your ability to work. We can help with assistive technology um, for people with vision impairments. They might need some uh, magnifiers or special computer equipment. Um, we can also help with some transportation assistance. If um, say someone is in a wheelchair and needs a vehicle modification, we can help with that vehicle modification. And we can also help with some medical services. Next slide. I wanna explain a little bit when I say medical services, what I mean. Um, we also use the term physical restoration when we talk about medical services. These services are available to, you have to be eligible uh, for our program in order to be, uh, to get them. And then they also have to be directly related to your job and your disability. So we can assist with uh, corrective surgeries and some therapeutic treatments. So for an example, if someone has cataracts um, and they don't have any insurance and the cataracts don't, they don't get better over time, they just get worse. And if your cataracts are getting so bad that you can't drive anymore, or you can't see your computer screen, um, we can help pay for that surgery. Uh, we can also pay for a knee surgery. If you've got an individual who is has to do climbing of ladders or standing all day and their knee, they have a torn ACL, um, and it is causing them to think about and consider, well, I, I may have to quit my job or I'm afraid I'm gonna get fired because of this. We could potentially do that knee surgery, shoulder surgery, same thing. Carpal tunnel, if you've ever had pain from carpal tunnel in your wrists and you type all day, that, that can be a major impact on your ability to work. CPAP machines, those are the uh, machines that people that have sleep apnea wear at night to help them get a be better restful sleep. Uh, because if you have a, a FedEx driver that has sleep apnea and he's falling asleep while he's driving, that's very dangerous to everyone, not just himself. Uh, so we can help purchase that CPAP machine. The one thing I want you to remember is that we are not an insurance company. So everything has to do with the, the disability and its impact on work, um, because that's what we're all about. Next slide. So that's a nutshell of our program. Um, I do want to leave you with this, this slide before I pass it on to Vanessa. Um, if you know someone that you want to make a referral for, because we have such a large audience from all over the state, um, I'm going to leave you with our statewide contact information instead of individual offices. Um, our statewide call center number is 512-936-6400. And that uh, gets to an operator that will take down your uh, initial information and get you connected with a counselor in your local area. You can also go to the website, the VR Near Me website, and enter your zip code, and that will give you the, the close, the local office to where you live. The uh, QR code that's on the screen is a new thing that we've just started called Start My VR. And you can hold your uh, your phone up to that QR code and it will take you directly to our self-referral page. So if you want to um, either apply or start your application or your interest uh, online, you uh, use that QR code and it will start you with some just name, name, address, and phone number questions to get you connected 
uh, to start your the VR process in your area. Um, I believe that this uh, page was also included as a handout so that you will have that QR code that you can access later. Um, but we do have offices all over the state of Texas and we some of them are moving around because we are co-locating all over the state with workforce offices. So if you by any chance have a hard time finding um, the VR program, check with your local workforce office. And so now I'm going to hand it over to Vanessa. Thank you so much, Megan. Megan. Mm -hmm. That was um, great information. And so now we're going to move along to the next slide to talk about more of the business relations side of the vocational rehabilitation program. So as you mentioned, as Ms. Megan had mentioned, um, the vocational rehabilitation services is available throughout the entire state of Texas. But within the vocational rehabilitation services, we have our counselors that work directly with our customers. And um, Megan and I work directly with the community and bringing, engaging with them more. And my focus is businesses, targeting those businesses as a business relation coordinator. Next slide. So some of the objectives of the business services are um, we coordinate and enhance strategies to develop and maintain business relationships that will result in improved quality employment for our vocational rehabilitation customers. So um, as you know, we partner a lot and collaborate with our local workforce development boards to identify best practices and coordinating services to businesses at the local level and promoting replication of these practices. Now in this area, I like to talk a little bit about um, just kind of um, our identity. So as you know, work like Megan mentioned, we had a history of where we've come from, um, from several years ago to now, and we've transitioned from several names. And so Texas Workforce Solutions has always been out there and everybody knows them. And so we like to make sure that individuals also know that now as part of a different agency within Texas Workforce, you have our vocational rehabilitation services. And so that's one of the things that um, we partner up, that I partner up with our local workforce boards to really get the identity out there so that um, businesses can understand who workforce is in every area, but also who we are as the vocational rehabilitation division. So um, in the next slide, I like to start reviewing just a little bit of some statistics. So um, I'm not too sure if you guys are aware, which is the third largest market out there um, when it comes to looking for employment. So it's definitely not a particular race. It's not a gender or a cleverly named age cohort. It is actually people with disabilities. The size of this population is more than 50 million strong and more than Generation X and teens. Moving forward, um, as you can see, this is a huge number of an untapped market out there in, in our community. And so if we take a deeper dive into this, we look at Texans aged 18 through 64. This is more or less that working age group. And within this age group, you have 1.6 million that have a disability. And so like Megan had mentioned earlier, we always like to ensure that when you use a terminology disability, it doesn't mean somebody that, that you automatically visualize that has a visible disability. And again, somebody that may be in a wheelchair or somebody that uses a cane or signs, there is a lot of non-visible disabilities that Megan was talking about, especially during our time right now um, being during COVID, we have seen a significant increase in non-visible disabilities, which include depression and anxiety. So this is also part of that 1.6 million. Within that age group, we also have 85,000 Texans with disabilities of working age who are actively seeking employment. They want to find work. They're looking for that opportunity to get in there. And 440,000 have a bachelor's degree or higher. And most likely will go into self-employment because of the barriers that they encounter in trying to find employment with an employer. 
moving forward, um, we talk a little bit more about a business relations coordinator. What do we do and who do we serve, you know, within the vocational rehabilitation services program? So we have, I have dual customers, my customers being the employers and also job seekers. Some of the um, services that we provide to the employers that are out there are, we provide free disability awareness education and training. These trainings can be customized to um, specific trainings for autism or specific trainings for deafness or visually impaired, or we can do disability etiquette that covers all trainings, right? All disabilities. And so we provide this free of cost if the employer is wanting to educate their employees or their staff um, or even just the community. We also have a, um, a new training that's called the windmills training. This training is, is highly sought after through a lot of HR departments. Um, individuals cannot provide this training if they don't have an actual certification to do so. And most of the time, HRs will always pay for a windmills trainer to provide this diversity and inclus uh, inclusive training to their, uh, to their staff. Well, um, the state of Texas actually had some of the business relation coordinators under um, the VR program attend this training. And so we now are certified under windmills training and can provide this service to any employer that's out there for free. So I like that term for free. <laughs> so um, we definitely do all those customized trainings. We do work site analysis. If there is an employer that's looking to bring in more diverse population into their, um, to their um, sites, we go out there and we, you know, kind of identify if there's any going to be any barriers, we figure out any type of accommodations that may be needed. Um, and then also job analysis. The job analysis is, is a big one for especially for our visually impaired individuals. So if there is an individual who is considered legally blind and is a VR customer and got a job with say, I'm just going to say as an example, um, United Health Group, and they're going to be working on the computer. Well, our individual will need to have access to some assistive technology within the computer like JAWS or um, magnification um, apps within the computer. So we don't always know if the computers that the employers have will be accessible to our customers. So we have specific individuals within our agency that hold the title of employment assistance specialist. And they are um, they prioritize and focus on going to these job sites and work with the employers to see if these applications of JAWS or magnifications would be accessible for them. And if not, they try to identify what can be done and how they can um, include these uh, softwares into the computer so that way our customer can have a successful employment outcome. And again, that is also free of charge. All of our services within the VR agency to employers is free of cost, as long as it's, it's meant to help accommodate our customers to a successful employment outcome. We also do a lot of hiring um, and retention assistance. So if there's employers out there that do want to bring that inclusion and diversity into their workplace, we partner and we court them. We make sure that we, we sit down, have some thoughtful conversations as to how they want to move forward with that process. And we can provide some qualified applicants being referred to their specific um, business. We also not only like to stop there, but we also want to make sure that as a, an additional support to our employers, that we help them already you know maintain their current employees so you had heard Megan mention before that sometimes you have individuals that are working but then they get injured at the job site well this is where job retention services can come in say that you have somebody that was taking a medication and all of a sudden overnight they had a hearing loss they went deaf in one ear and there were a secretary but now they can't hear what's being said to them and so now there's barriers that are um, causing some impediments for them to be successfully um, employed well as a job retention service this is where we can go in there and also support that current employee and um, provide them the services that they need to um, break down those barriers and help them maintain their job confidently and successfully. We also provide any assistance with accommodation assessments. Sometimes there's employers that um, may be a little bit confused as to where do I go or how do I know exactly what to provide a, a specific individual, whether they have a hearing loss, whether they're deaf, whether they need um, access due to a um, wheel, wheelchair 
or maybe they need some information just as to tips and tricks, right? that they'd like to share with their staff. So we also help with those accommodations as well. And we make sure that not only is the customer confident in the area that they're working in, but that the employer is also confident in being able to provide whatever type of accommodations that are needed to them. Um, so we so mentioned before, we do referral of qualified applicants. Um, Ms. Megan reviewed a lot of the type of services that we provide for our VR customers, which we also refer to as job seekers. Um, so just to go through that briefly, we do career counseling and guidance, job search assistance, disability related skills trainings, academic and vocational training if needed, um, assistive technology and support devices. So to us as business relation coordinators, both are equally important and it is our job to assist in their linkage. So moving on to the next slide, we like to talk about some of the successful business partnerships that we have had um, established already. So we partner up with several universities when it comes to presentations, whether it be disability specific, etiquette, um, referral of qualified applicants. We work very closely with their department, with their HR department to ensure that if they're looking for that individual that, that has a qualified uh, qualifications to be referred for an opportunity that they have with them, that we connect our VR customers to the university and ensure that the transition will be successful should they need any types of accommodations to either obtain the job or maintain the job successfully. <clears throat> we have partner um, we have partnered really well with HEB. They have a department that's called the Bridges Program. And so we make sure that all of our customers that go into apply for an HEB job that we refer them to what they call the Bridges Program. HEB also um, recruits from our agency in regards to their new neurodiversity program that they have established. Their pilot program was this past summer, which was very successful and they're, they'll be doing another one next summer. We have collaborated with United Health Group. We have collaborated with United Healthcare, Southwest Research Institute, Cognizante, Enterprise Holdings, local government, and Amazon. And this is just a few um, that we have partnered with. We've partnered a lot with our local communities. As Megan also had mentioned, we work with you know Corpus Christi, Victoria, Rio Grande Valley, um, Uvalde and Laredo. So we have several different uh, small businesses that we also support um, with referral, job retention, or disability uh, training services. So on the next slide, some of the collaborations that we have had with these businesses is we partner up for business expos. Sometimes the businesses come up to us and say, we'd really like to focus on um, encouraging our partners, our network, you know, community of other businesses to hire and, and recruit, you know, individuals with a disability. We just don't know how to do that. Can you help us establish a, a job fair or maybe a, you know, job retention presentation? How do we go about it? So we help with the coordinating. We coordinate several projects together with our businesses or with our partners. Um, we also attend job fairs, whether it be in person or whether it be virtual. The job fairs that I attend is definitely to go out there and really network with all, with all of the employers to, again, let them know who we are as a VR agency and to start opening those conversations for doors to be opened for our individuals that are qualified to meet those job qualifications. We also do, um, we host a lot of employer spotlights that could be statewide, it can be region-wide, or it can be local. We like to invite the employers that are definitely wanting to include that include into their workplace and uh, spotlight them with our agency that is local. We do have two offices here in the lower Rio Grande Valley. And so um, what we do is when we have those individuals that want to partner with us, those employers, we want to make sure that our counselors know that these are some inclusive employers that are really wanting to, to bring those qualified applicants into their workplace. Um, we also like to make sure that our, our counselors understand who our employers are and what their needs are, so that way they could have that direct connection as well. All of our counselors here in the uh, VR program can house anywhere between 60 to almost 100 customers that are either in training, are finished with training, are job ready, and are actively seeking employment. So the employer spotlights are really good that 
for our staff so they can have a better understanding of who is out there um, and who they can refer to them. We like to establish some work experience programs within those employers as well. As you know, we have youth and adults that may still be trying to figure out what direction or path that they wanna take. Our program work experience allows for that and we partner with our, with our customers, excuse me, we partner with our employers to set that up for them. We do the direct placement, which is our referral system, the customized trainings for them, the windmills trainings. And also we partner up with them to celebrate the National Disability Employer Awareness Month, which takes place in October. So whenever you have those employers that really want to um, focus on the, the Awareness Month, we partner with them to develop any type of presentations or any type of, um, Feature, like featuring different customers that have been successful at their job sites. So that's just a really good, uh, a really good celebration that we collaborate with them. Next slide. So this is my contact information. Um, my name again, Vanessa Vera, Business Relations Coordinator, um, Texas Workforce Solutions, Vocational Rehabilitation Services. You have my cell phone number on the screen and my email address. I am currently located and housed in the Harlingen office, but I do serve our entire region with my partner, Ricky Rendon. Um, and that is it for our presentation today. I do wanna thank you all for your time. If you have any questions, please feel free to go ahead and, and ask them. And we, Megan and I will be uh, more than happy happy to answer any of those questions. Here we have Ms. Um, Megan's contact information as well. Ms. Megan, do you want to go ahead and um, give them the information? Sure. Um, so I am housed in Victoria, um, but I do cover the whole region as well. <clears throat> and my cell phone number is on the screen 361-676-1392. And you can contact me also if you need any more information uh, about our general VR services. I didn't look at the chat. Uh, let's see. We do have a few questions. I'm happy to read them to you um, okay. if that's easier for you. Sure. Okay. Um, so you mentioned that VRS assists with vehicle modifications. If a parent or guardian is the sole person that provides transportation to and from work for their child, would the parent qualify for these modifications or only the individual enrolled in your services? Example, making modifications to the parent's vehicle so that it is power wheelchair accessible. Yes, it, the, the, the child or the person with the disability is the one that is the customer, but if their uh, parent is the one that provides them the transportation, then, then we can, we work that out. Okay, thank you. Um, we had another question, how do we get that training? And I believe she was referring to the disability awareness education and training Absolutely. So um, in my contact information, you are more than welcome to send me an email or give me a phone call and let me know what specific training you guys are interested in. And then um, we can get we can have a little sit down planning session and get that customized and ready to go for you. Thank you. Um, another question, can individuals have cases reopened with VR if they have been in their job for a while, but need something like hearing aids or AT? Yes, um, we, although we are not a program that you, once you're determined eligible, you stay eligible and open for the rest of your life. We are uh, focused, uh, I don't necessarily mean short term, but we're focused on, on the goal and achieving that goal. But if you have had a service with us in a case and we've closed your case, but something's changed and you either have a new disability or a new need, uh, we can open a new case. So yes, you, um, you can reapply. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, and then is there someone in Amarillo doing business development like you, Megan? So the um, business development portion is on my side. So um, that would be 
in, in regards to all of the services that we can, that VR can do to support the businesses and the VR customers, we do have business relations coordinators throughout our entire state of Texas. And we are divided into six regions and every region has two business relation coordinators. If you would like to also email me um, your information, I can give you the contact um, information for the individuals at your location. Thank you. Um, another question is in regards to a disability, um, for example, intellectual disability, and the person wishes to work, is there an assessment that will qualify or disqualify them as a candidate? In other words, can the individual be deemed ineligible due to the fact that their disability is too severe? Um, that's not necessarily an easy answer. Um, what we do is we try every, every possibility and every which way to help an individual go to work. So um, there, you know, there are cases and situations that a disability could be too severe, but we don't just uh, do, do a test or an assessment and say, no, you're not eligible because you're too severe. We actually, we work with them, sit down with them and try every way we can to help them become employed. So, um, and it's, mm. it's typically a, a joint uh, discussion that we have about whether the disability is too severe or not, but it's so. And Megan, if I may include, we also have a service, a service within our agency that is called work trial. And those mm -hmm. are for those cases that you're uh, referring to specifically. Um, I also assist in trying to find locations where our customers can do a work trial experience, where basically what happens is we get them a location, we look at their abilities, and we try to carve out different types of employment if the employer will allow us. After the work trial um, time frame, the counselor, the customer, and maybe even our support services of a job skills trainer will all, you know, come together and identify was, were there successes within the work trial? And if so, can we move forward with, you know, services and placement? So we do have that. And it's like Megan mentions that every case is, is um, individualized and it's a case by case situation, but we just, we do have that specific service to assess it. Thank you. And kind of to build on that, what would there be additional supports during that work trial that the individual may be um, afforded? Would there be additional job coaching, um, counseling, or therapies? Megan, you want to answer that? Yes, we we try to give all of the supports that, that the person potentially would need. So um, like I said, we do everything we can to if someone wants to work to help them find the right job that fits them and fits their needs. Yes, and in addition to that, when we look at the counselors that each customer is assigned to, our counselors either, most of them, I would like to say that the majority of our VR counselors have a master's and if not are in the process of obtaining their master's. So they are the ones to really sit down and identify the additional supports that any customer may need based on evaluations, based on those conversations with you know, the individual, with their family members, and um, decide on the supports that an individual would need specifically to be successful at a job site. And that can include maybe some vocational adjustment training prior to going into a job to learn those soft skills. Maybe they will need some um, food handler certification. And so we can send them for that. Maybe they're going to need a job skills trainer to provide those job coaching. Um, what what is key here is always going to be communication, that communication with the, you know, customer and the counselor. And then when they're going into the environment of work, it's also <laughs> going to be key that communication is, is set and consistent, consi consistently established with the customer, the counselor, the employer as well. Thank you, Vanessa. And one more question in the chat. How long is the trial period? Um, I imagine it may vary, but maybe not. Right. So the work trial um, is normally up to 12, 12 weeks, but it doesn't mean it's only in one area. 
Um, if you do a work trial, say with one specific employer, and then you try different departments, um, maybe an individual had some successes, but not a lot. So they'll look at the successes an individual has had, and then they'll try to establish another work trial um, time frame with a different employer that may have more more availability in the job duties where the individual is successful, and they can, so there's not like a set time a, a set. Um, how many you can have of work trial experiences. It's really giving the individuals those opportunities to identify. And again, it's a collaborative effort and communication will always be key for the success of the, of the case and the individual. Thank you. And if anyone else has questions, you're welcome to place those in the chat. We have a few more moments or you're welcome to unmute, unmute yourself and ask, one thing that I want to leave y'all with is, um, you know, if if you're unsure of whether something qualifies as a disability, uh, an impairment, or a diagnosis, um, you do not need to come to our services or uh, before you apply. You do not need to have all of the medical documentation or assessments. Uh, we can do some of those uh, to assess your. Um, your limitation or the medical situation that you're in. So uh, don't ever let things uh, keep you from calling uh, a VR office. You can always call the office and tell someone your situation and then they can take more individual time with you to find out what we can actually do to help. We'll keep it open for a few more minutes and they may have some announcements as well. Yes, please continue to drop questions um, for Vanessa and Megan to answer. Um, and while we are waiting for more questions to pop up, I'll just keep their contact information up. Um, so again, this was the second session of a three-part presentation. Tomorrow, we'll continue with our third and final presentation of the week um, that will focus on family supports. Um, and so a link for that has been dropped in the chat and it'll be dropped again. Um, if you all need to contact myself or Rosa, our emails will be dropped in the chat as well. But Vanessa and Megan, thank you so much for sharing the information today. Um, this was extremely helpful. Um, even those of us who are familiar with Texas Workforce, learning more about the services offered always um, is just a great, great joy to have you guys present and share that information. Um, and then if anybody else has any questions, feel free to go ahead and keep asking. I think that Daniel has his, uh, Mr. Daniel Martinez has his hand raised up. Yes, Daniel, if you want to come off of your, come off of mute, you can also ask your question off of mute. And we have a question from Amanda and Mary. Okay, Daniel, yes. go ahead. Hi, a quick question, um, because there was some confusion um, with some uh, friends of mine where they're asking uh, for people with disabilities uh, who are blind and others that have other disabilities, how does the agency work? Is there two different programs uh, regarding the vocational rehab counseling? Um. So uh, in, in the past, and I didn't include it in our history, but um, for many years, there was Texas Rehabilitation Commission, and then there was Commission for Texas uh, Commission for the Blind, and we were separate agencies. But I think it was around 2004 or 16, at some point in the past few years, we have been merged together. Um, the entire time we were separate, the federal government saw our services as uh, we provide the same services. We just had separated out um, the visually impaired uh, into their own commission, but we have since merged. And so we, um, the vocational rehabilitation services program services all disabilities, including visually impaired. And uh, we do have specialized counselors 
uh, that uh, know and understand visual impairment to work with the visually impaired customers. And we also have um, a couple specialty positions that um, work directly with the visually impaired um, in uh, learning skills to be at home uh, and live more independently and also how to, you know, use things like um, canes and, and to get around and, and use uh, public transportation and those kind of things. So we do have some specialized services for the visually impaired, but we are all one agency now. Thank you, Megan. Did that answer your question, Daniel? Yes, thank you very much. Thank you. Um, another question is, I'm assuming in the work trial or meetings with counselor and benefits, such as SSI, SSDI, the counselor will assess if the job can be part-time or full-time? Yes. One of the things that we do as a counselor is we sit down with the individual and talk with them about, um, out, about their interests. And um, when we do those that benefits review, we let them know if you work full time, this is what will happen to your benefits. If you work part time, this is what will happen with your benefits. So that they know going in, they can make an informed decision on what how many hours they want to work. And we Absolutely. we do consider part time employment as so if an individual only wants to work part time um, because they don't want it to affect their benefits mm -hmm. or whatever reason, that's okay. fine with us. We definitely have the, the pros and cons conversation and um, every individual that does receive social security benefits should have access to that conversation with their counselors or even a more in-depth um, appointment with a, a um, CWIC is what they call them, um, where it's like about an hour to two hours sit down with an expert um, that can go over those details more specifically. But it's definitely our intentions to inform them prior to even engaging into employment, because the last thing that we want is for the individual to have their benefits interrupted or did not understand how it will have the benefits interrupted. And also for the employer to ensure that the employer doesn't lose an individual that just recently got hired. Thank you. And maybe one last question. Do you provide training for a device that someone receives from VR, such as a screen reader or CCTV? Yes, yes. We have those special uh, positions and individuals that uh, know and understand how to use all of that equipment, and uh, they can uh, teach them how to use the, all of assistive technology. Thank you. Megan, um, I will be logging off um, to attend another presentation. I do want to thank you guys for the opportunity to be able to present to you guys. As, as you can see, um, working for this agency is definitely a passion of Ms. Megan and myself. We're very committed to our agency, but please feel free to email me or contact me for any further questions. You guys have a wonderful day. Thank Thanks, you. Vanessa. Thank you, Vanessa. Megan, do you have time for one more question? Yes, yes. Okay. Um, do you help individuals to make sure they'll keep their intended attendant care through Texas HHSC? Um, while we, you know, don't specifically uh, know the rules of HHSC and manage those uh, things, we do work with the individual on all of the services and resources that they have. And so we, we will coordinate with them and, and help them trying to find out information to make sure that their choices are their choices and that they know all of the information going in. Like Vanessa said, we don't want to um, set them up in a job and then they realize that all of these things have changed for them. We, we wanna know that going in so they can make that informed choice. Um, I want to point out on this screen, my email, the font that's used, the color is very difficult to read for me. So I went ahead and put it in the chat as well, my email address. Um, and then Giovanni, um, who is my counterpart in the Austin area, uh, she put her information in the chat as well as how to contact her. Uh, so if anybody wants to either have another presentation for a different group or wants more information, contact either one of us. 
Thank you. Linda, did that answer your question? Yes, it did. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Um, and again, if y'all have any more questions, feel free to email Megan or email Vanessa or email us and we can forward those questions along. Um, we did record the chat today too. So we'll be able to provide um, a document that includes all of the questions and responses today as well. The recording will be provided um, as soon as that is uploaded to our webpage along with all of the handouts. Um, thank you all for attending today. Um, and we look forward to our session tomorrow. Oh, last thing. Also, please fill out the evaluation. Um, a link was just dropped by Dr. Vaughn into the chat, and I will also send the evaluation to all of the attendees. But your evaluation responses help with us to be able to create more topics um, and schedule more presenters for the future. So please make sure you fill out the evaluation. And thank you all for attending. Happy Wednesday. Thank you. Well, ladies, thank you. Uh,